All right, everyone, not only is this the big news of the day, it's also a very, very good thing. I, I'm overjoyed at this, actually, and that is that Diane Feinstein, she was sort of locked in a bitter race with a primary challenger from within the Democratic Party, who, by the way, is, is a total leftist, like total far left California. In fact, further left, I think, fiscally and, and on like healthcare and stuff than she is. She lost the endorsement of the California Democratic Party. She's lost the endorsement of, of the party within her state. Uh, this makes sense for a number of reasons. Number one, her popularity is slipping. Um, neoliberals aren't quite as popular among the, the younger voters, especially as they used to be. Number two, she's, I believe, 84. Okay, how long should a person reasonably be in the Senate before we say, okay, maybe it's time to give somebody else a chance? You know, regardless of party, ideology, any of that stuff, doesn't there come a time... Unless a person is utterly stellar at which they need to step aside and let some, some I think the average age of a senator is in, this, in their uh, late 60s anyway, isn't it? It's one of the oldest incarnations of Congress, uh, or possibly the oldest that we've had. Um, I would think that at some point, you know, reasonably speaking, the average person, once they get into their mid-80s, is not mentally quite as capable as they were when they were younger. You know, you can make it, a, you can say 70s, that's okay. A lot of people, they, they hit 80 and they're still with it, but very few people make it through their 80s and still are with it. There are a few, but it's the minority. It's, it's not the majority at that point. The majority of people make it to 70 and they're just fine. They're not like racked with problems. They're not totally infirm, although, you know, statistically most of them are now obese. Uh, and until they're on their deathbed, then they wither away, which is quite uh, sad, by the way. Uh, I don't know if uh, anyone is aware of this fact. If you haven't uh, challenged death before it's your time to die, you should uh, go and observe it and desensitize yourself. Trust me, it's, it's called a shabba. It's a good thing. It's a Buddhist ideal, oddly enough. But uh, Feinstein, she hasn't been all there for some time. Now, those of us, I think, who are politically sane would say, well, she's never actually been quite with it. She's, uh, she's a neoliberal. So she's, uh, remember that time that she was like uh, holding that assault rifle, you know, an AR-15, uh, sporting rifle. And she had like her finger actually on the trigger and was sort of like sweeping it over the crowd. I think that, I think that was her years ago. And people had a big uh, discussion over how funny it was. Uh, that Feinstein literally knows nothing about firearms at all and yet wants to, to legislate on them. The natural defense of the left on this has been, well, yeah, but the right always wants to legislate like about abortion and stuff. And it's like, well, then there are a few special people like me who want, you know, who are pro-choice as well. We're also pro-choice when it comes to the choice of, hey, do you want the, the AR-15 or the 9mm to defend your home or go hunting or whatever? You get whatever gun you want, you should be able to do that. Feinstein doesn't know anything about that. She obviously doesn't understand healthcare. She doesn't understand anything really at this point. She's, you know, in her mid-80s. And again, I hate to say it, but a lot of people, they get to that point, they start to slow down real quick. Um, do we really want Feinstein in there till she's 90? Like, oh, yeah, I, I can't leave at this point because evil Dolan Trump is in office. Okay, I would think having a bunch of senile individuals in Congress is itself a pretty significant problem. And there are already people there who are questionable as to their mental capabilities. There are plenty of people in Congress, I think we'd all agree, who were questionable in their mental capabilities when they first got voted in. No matter how young they were, it doesn't even matter. But Feinstein, wasn't she also one of the SOPA heads, like one of the big proponents of wanting to censor the net? And she has been, I do know, I do remember, I think this was, uh, I think it was 2013, it was, it was a while ago. You know, she was still a spring chicken of 79 or something at the time. And she said, well, the First Amendment shouldn't protect like blogs and stuff. You know, they, people shouldn't be allowed to engage in journalistic activity without a journalism degree. It was probably the most unconstitutional suggestion that any modern sitting congressperson has actually made. Blatantly in every possible way. And of course, you know, nothing was done about it because everyone knew she was wrong. Like she would have gotten zero Democrats to vote for such a proposal. But it was an attempt. Attempts were made at the time to denigrate the internet. Now back then, it wasn't even a pressing issue. At that time, the alternative, uh, alternative media and alt entertainment stuff. They were growing. Now, they were already significant, but they couldn't swing an election. They couldn't nominate a candidate. They couldn't form a party. They couldn't uh, uh, really begin changing the minds of people brainwashed by a CNN or a Fox News. 
So back then when attempts were made on the internet or on free speech in general, it was just sort of authoritarians being authoritarian. They didn't even really press the issue. Feinstein and others now have taken up though the line that they need to press it more uh, using NGOs and also partnering with corporations. It's very funny to see the Democratic Party embrace corporatism. Uh, it's very, very funny. Now they already had basically uh, around the time of 2012 when Obama and Mitt Romney were both taking Goldman Sachs money, it became to get a little bit uh, conspicuous, which is why I wrote in Ron Paul. Uh, it became conspicuous that the GOP was led by people who were fundamentally the same as the, the neoliberals of the Democrats, and then you had a few people on both, you had the Ron Pauls, and then you had like the Gravels or Kuciniches that were outside, they were fringe uh, while being within the party, and they were just sort of throw a token individuals to gain interest while never being taken seriously. Ron Paul was used to drum up uh, excitement and then cast aside at the earliest possible opportunity having done so. Rand functioned in somewhat the same manner, a warning to him, you're not taken seriously by the neoliberals. They'll smile, but they, they smile at you with a dagger behind their back, basically. That's how these people operate. They do it to one another and on a corporate level, too. These big tech firms would gladly stab each other in the back if they could make 10 bucks off of it. Feinstein, meanwhile, she's made all sorts of money in her very long and non-distinguished career of basically just not knowing what the hell she's doing and voting along party lines. So she's just a career politician, a boring neoliberal. It's funny. Now, it doesn't matter that the person, you know, who's probably going to replace her is far left. It's California, so it's not exactly like that person was going to be a, you know, a business Democrat. It's not like there's any significant challenge from the GOP for that position. Saying, well, we've got to hold rank behind Feinstein and defend this seat at all costs because Trump... Don't worry, you don't have to do much to defend that kind of particular seat. That's like saying, oh yeah, say the Republicans. Um, the middle of nowhereville seat is going to be up. Oh no, we have to back the establishment rhino because otherwise we, we might slip from an 80 point lead to a 75 point lead. Shit, well, we've got we've to get behind this corrupt career politician. Now, there are certain positions in the country where unless you had a total chaotic overthrow of the existing political situation, you don't even have to spend a penny to defend them. It's just, hey, here's who's nominated, run, the person makes a speech, and then accepts victory. That's all they basically have to do. Feinstein happens to be one of those, you know, that's, that's one of those seats where the Democrats are not going to lose it. You'd have to have the reincarnation of Ronald Reagan run against her at that point. Uh, and she's the weaker of the two. I think the, uh, her challenger was preferred 53 to 37% or something, you know, obviously some undecided. It was a fairly large gap. And so uh, she's going to, she loses that endorsement. She's probably going to lose. She's going to lose her primary. They're getting rid of Feinstein, you know, a joyful day for us. Get rid of Pelosi next. She's crazy too. She's also clearly developing early stage, early onset Alzheimer's or something. She needs to uh, be out of Congress. You know, part of it is. It's not just party, it's also the representation of a state. Does, do, would any state want someone who's demented representing them? That wouldn't look, I think, good on a national stage. Now, there are some people who say, well, Donald Trump, he might have Alzheimer's or something. Okay, Donald Trump just barely turned 70. Dianne Feinstein is in her mid-80s, and she's starting to have problems anyway. Her idea of hanging out with the girls is she goes out with, with uh, Ginsburg <laughs> for a night on the town and they, uh, they take their digestive biscuits uh, and then they tip back a, a cold one and then pass out, you know, at five o'clock. That's kind of their bedtime. You know, their handlers, their helpers have to get them around places, uh, not just armed guards, which is funny. Uh, but their helpers literally, oh, here, take my arm because otherwise, you know, you might break a hip. Uh, so you just go, come on. Now it's time to go home. It's 530. It's time for your warm milk. Uh, it's time It's time for you to uh, bathe in the blood of Vestal Virgins or, you know, whatever other weird stuff these people do. They get into some weird shit. And Dianne Feinstein's one of the weirdest of them all. So it's, oh, it's great news. It's like the funniest story. It's the best news so far this year. In a year that so far, yeah, there's been quite a bit of funny shit going on. Here we are, you know, February's about to end. Uh, we've got, uh, I think, our first true contender for funniest story of the year uh, at the end of the year, or best story, rather. So we'll see what happens with the midterms, because that could have an impact on who's in the running at the